Hey, welcome back to Upper Michigan Today, everybody. We are talking New Year's resolutions and goals. So New Year, new us, right, Elizabeth? I don't know. I've heard that you're not supposed to say New Year, new you. I mean, I, I don't know, say me, so many okay? Things. But if you do want to make a new you, you can't really do that without setting a smart goal, it's setting true. a smart resolution and actually sticking to it. So we are here with Sarah Santiago of Bloom Mental Health to talk about how to do that, how to set a smart goal and stick to it. So this is something we've actually talked to you in the past, probably exactly one year yeah, ago, setting a, a smart goal. Uh, I chatted with this with Travis Alexander on Friday, the acronym SMART and how yes. that can really set you up for success so let's talk about why goals fail in the first place and then how to be set up for success yeah absolutely so that's what I love about smart goals is it walks you through all of those steps to ensure that you have a plan that you're being realistic right and I really think that that's often why our goals fail right and we tend to internalize that when we don't accomplish a goal we see that as a failure and many of us then blame ourselves instead of looking at was I set up for success did I maybe not plan for some barriers that I ran into right but instead we internalize it and we judge ourselves and then we completely stop, right? We, we, we formulize this all or nothing thinking. Yeah, yeah. So let's put Tia to the test. Oh. What is that, what, what does, yeah, what's, what's SMART? What do they stand for? <laughs> Specific, uh -huh. measurable, uh -huh. achievable, Ooh. realistic, realistic, and time bound. Yes, hey! excellent. Good You're morning. already off on a good note. Yes. Mm -hmm. You're nailing it. Mm -hmm. So why, why focus on those five things? Yeah, so one really important aspect to goal setting and achieving our goals is to break it down to be realistic, measurable, attainable, right? And these are all like check boxes to ensure that our goal is something that we're set up to achieve. And so in, it, it, instead of saying, I wanna get off my phone more, right? It gets deeper, right? So what does that look like, you know, in your daily life, right? How many hours a day do you want to be on your phone? What does, you know, what, what is your deadline? Do you have a year to accomplish this? Do you need to accomplish this in the next few months, right? And so when we, when we look at all those details, we can formulate a plan and really ensure that we're successful in being able to meet this goal. And I like the way that you talk about self-promises. Yeah. Um, I think that is a nice, soft way mm -hmm. to set goals or, you know, we, we talk a lot about words, right? Um, new new yes. year, new me, uh, diet versus lifestyle versus mm -hmm. nutrition versus goals, resolutions. There's like all, and to me, it doesn't really matter what you call it as long right. as it works for who you are. But the idea of making a promise to yourself, mm -hmm. you know, I like that, you know, I'm giving myself a little pinky promise on yes. something. And what I love about calling them self-promises or some people say non-negotiables, right? Or whatever you want to call them. Um, is that people don't realize that it, it can either positively or negatively influence our self-esteem mm. and our self-worth, right, and our confidence. And so all the time we say things like, I'm gonna do this tomorrow, or I should be doing this, right? I need to be doing more of blank. And that doesn't set us up for success, right? So when you use something like the SMART goals acronym to ensure that you're set up for success, and then you can meet that goal, right? We're gonna prove to ourselves that we are someone that is that we can depend on right that we are reliable that we are consistent that we show up for ourselves and when we take on too many goals at once or we make our goals too big right and then we're not able to meet them we have to be really gentle and kind to ourselves and look at well what were those barriers how can I go back right and work on a plan that is going to make this more likely to happen for me yeah I like the idea of thinking about goals as a promise to yourself mm -hmm. and then like thinking about yourself as another person like stepping right. out of your shoes and thinking you know what if, what if I was my very best friend you know mm -hmm. what if I'm my own loved one which you should be yes. in the first place but I feel like a lot of us don't really think about ourselves in that way so to like think about yourself as your own best friend exactly and think you know would I break a promise to my best friend if I told them I was going to do this right. I think that can really help you and, and shape uh, the way you go about doing your goals or completing them yeah yeah and and the piece too with a promise is typically 
sometimes we do, but typically we're not going to make a promise to someone that we care about if we're not really intending to follow through with it, mm -hmm. right? And we want to do the same thing with ourselves. Instead of saying, oh, tomorrow I'm going to do blank, when a part of us knows we are not mm -hmm. going to do that, right? Yeah. Really reserving your goals or your self-promises to just a few that you are really going to work hard to stick to. And before we go to break, real quick, how do you recommend dealing with external factors? Because when you're sitting down and you're planning and you're making yeah. these promises to yourself, right. it can feel like, oh, this is going to be a breeze. Like, mm -hmm. I am dedicated, I am 100%, in, and then mm -hmm. life happens, and people pull at you, and maybe people give their opinions, and they think, oh, what you're doing is silly. Yeah. You know, you should do this instead. Or, uh, So how do you stay focused on yourself without mm -hmm. being selfish? Yeah, that's a great question. So. I am a, a big promoter of really recognizing our own achievements for ourselves. We live in a digital world where we want to share, and, and there's beauty in sharing and celebrating our achievements and accomplishments mm -hmm. with others. But when we can do that for ourselves and we can recognize, look at all the work that I put into, or look at how much I survived, a really hard challenge or a hard year, right? And we give ourselves just a mini, you know, moment to celebrate and recognize ourselves. it doesn't matter then what other people think about us because we are proud of mm -hmm. ourselves. Mm -hmm. And so some fun ways that I actually love to do that um, and I've been personally doing is I get little mini champagne bottles and I write goals and sometimes they're goals that are just going to happen, right? Like last year it was potty training my twins. Like yeah. I had to do that <laughs> last year. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to do that. I wasn't looking forward to it. I knew it was going to happen, right? But then I was able to like pop this little one single glass oh, of bubbly and just cheers myself like you did it. This is awesome. And just really take in that moment. Yeah. Tia, we should do that we for totally every day should. of the week. Hey, we got through <laughs> Thursday. Let's pop the champagne. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a great idea, though. I think that's really fun. Um, I, again, thank you for coming on the thank show with so us. Much. We're going to continue the conversation with you uh, later in the program, but yes. we want to talk about a couple other topics first. And the next one up is finances. It's always a hard topic, and uh, it's one that you really have to dedicate yourself to. We've got our expert in the studio with us. Stick around.